Good morning or afternoon. Good morning. So good morning. We're going to give another minute or two for Matt Ray uh, from OpenCost to arrive and some others. Hey, there's Matt. Hello, hello. As folks yeah. are filing in, I will uh, throw the meeting note link in the chat. Uh, and at the top of the hour here, I'll say welcome all. Um, uh, this is uh, the September 19th, 2023 meeting of the Technical Advisory Group on Observability, uh, part of the CNCF's framework of TAGS. Um, uh, this event is a CNCF event, uh, sponsored event. Please don't do or say anything that would be in violation of the CNCF's code of conduct. Uh, and, and welcome all, please do sign in. Uh, I see Matt is here. Uh, from the open cost project uh, and that's really uh, top of the agenda uh, later on in the hour uh, I think Al will be joining us uh, midway uh, we're going to talk about KubeCon North America plans uh, on a brief administrative note um, I've been looking into uh, where are all the videos uh, from last month or so and it seems all of our working groups and meetings and whenever anybody accidentally dialed into the wrong hour have been jammed into one flattened namespace, whereas they used to be all organized. So um, I'm investigating what has happened to our meetings. But if there are any working group meetings in particular you want me to prioritize, I'll be spending some time today and tomorrow uh, sorting sorting through uh, very large <laughs> very small videos uh, to, to, to find the, the, the most important ones first. Um, and with that, um, uh, Matt, if you're ready to go, you can share your screen. Um, we wanted to put you top of the hour. Uh, if there's any other agenda items, please feel free to add them uh, and we will address them as the time allows. Okay, uh, just one second. Hi, hey, how are you? And Ken. And then Tom and Ricard. Uh, okay. Okay, uh, I'll get everyone can see that. Okay. Oh, uh, well, thanks a lot. Uh, is this still on screen? Uh, it, it is. I was going to say, um, I forgot to mention one brief note of context I had. Sure. Uh, so uh, for those uh, who, who may not be aware, uh, the Open Cost Project uh, about a year and a half ago uh, came to tag observability when they made their proposal to enter the CNCF's sandbox um, uh, echelon of projects. Uh, now today, uh, they, they've made a proposal to enter the incubation phase, and as such, they are making a presentation to uh, tag observability uh, uh, minimally, uh, and, and perhaps other groups um, uh, to to talk about what's new with the project, what's changed, and about about what, uh, about what's happened in the last year and a half. So uh, I'm I'm very excited to have have you guys come back, and I look forward to learning more. Well, thank you for having me. Uh, excited to be here. Um, if, uh, if I'm a little off, <laughs> it's two in the morning for me. So, uh, I did take a nap, but, uh, we'll see how it goes. Um, so my name is Matt Ray. I'm the community manager for open cost, uh, and I work at Kube Cost. So, um, we'll see their name a few more times, but, um, I'm here today, obviously to talk about open cost. Uh, hopefully everyone here at tag observability is already familiar with the project, but, um, what we do is we are uh, Kubernetes cost monitoring. Uh, so as uh, as Matt mentioned, we are a CNCF sandbox project, um, and we are both a specification and an implementation. And I'll I'll dig down into that just a little bit. If if anyone has questions, 
you know, feel free to interrupt me and I, cause that's what we're here for is uh, to, you know, do Q and a, but hopefully I'll, I'll cover off on, on everything that uh, comes up as we go. Um, it's not CNCF, but uh, another foundation under the Linux foundation is the FinOps foundation. And we are considered a certified solution, which means we don't you know try to solve everything in your cloud uh, financial stack, but uh, we, we certify uh, we're certified for, this little slice that covers uh, Kubernetes cloud native stuff. Um, our website, opencost.io. Uh, our GitHub is uh, github.com slash opencost. And of course, we are listed on the CNCF website. Um, to start with, the, the open, open cost specification is kind of an explanation of how the problem is being tackled. Um, you know, Kubernetes workloads are you know, they're ephemeral sometimes for, for some workloads where, you know, they come and go, they, they get rescheduled, they, they get moved. Um, and so what we want to do is track everything that's happening inside your cluster uh, and then figure out, you know, how do we measure who's responsible for what, you know, by, and we take do that by um, querying, the APIs of the, the cloud provider for their billing information. Uh, in some cases, they have uh, uh, APIs uh, available to you as an individual. So we have uh, customer specific data. Uh, and then uh, we're going to map out those prices back to the usage and store that over time. And that way we can do reports over them. Um, you know, and so uh, you know, the things that we measure uh, our CPU and memory. Um, if you are using GPUs, we're going to keep track of those. Uh, if you are using persistent volumes, um, we're going to track uh, what, what you have there uh, and load balancers attached to your cluster. So as of today, open cost is strictly what is within, what is attached to your Kubernetes cluster um, and what uh, what is um you know, what is uh, directly allocated to it, um, as well as management fees. So, you know, for example, if you were using like uh, EKS on AWS, uh, we would be tracking the cost of your EC2 nodes, um, any EBS volumes that you may have mounted for your persistent volumes, uh, and um, the management fee of the, the EKS cluster as overhead. Um, so that's what we're measuring. Uh, and then we take the measurements that, uh, of the, you know, what's happening inside your cluster and ma map them back to, uh, eventually back to containers is, is the, the, the goal is, you know, we want to map everything back to a container in time. And then from that, we can build up different aggregations, you know, whether we're looking at um, the pod that the container was a member of, or, you know, the namespace that uh, the container ran in. Um, and, uh, you know, and then obviously the nodes and the cluster that we were running in. So that's, that's the data that we're holding. It's not, um, you know, there, there's obviously other costs inside your cloud, uh, that we are not tracking yet, but I'll talk about that a little bit later. Um, open cost is fairly straightforward, fairly simple. Uh, we're running on top of Prometheus. So the first step in installation is you install Prometheus. Um, we use the default cluster or the def default um, community Helm chart um, and just slap down a Prometheus. Um, we're going to query KSM, Node Exporter, and C Advisor uh, to get a, some uh, of the data that we're going to use. Um, we record that every minute and then uh, you uh, coordinate that with the data coming off of the Kubernetes API and out of the billing APIs. Um, we also do uh, spot data, spot instance uh, measurements if if uh, if you're configured for that. Um, and you know then you know we store that data in Prometheus, and uh, we have a separate. There are two containers in the open cost pod. Um, one is the cost model, which is the one doing all the calculations, you know, querying uh, Prometheus to pull the data. And then 
the querying the APIs and then pushing that data right back into Prometheus. Um, there are, uh, you can, uh, there are definitely folks who are storing the data in places besides Prometheus. Um, you know, by default, we're just working with Prometheus, but we've had folks use uh, Grafana Cloud, for example, uses Mamir. Um, we have people using uh, Thanos and um, and Cortex and Victoria Metrics. So uh, those are the Prometheus compatible uh, long-term storage uh, locations that, that we've seen people use. Um, you can also use uh, Amazon Manage Prometheus. And there was an issue raised about a Prometheus embedded inside an Azure product, but I don't know if we ever got resolution on that. So, you know, there's a lot of Prometheus compatible uh, storage um, endpoints that, that we can work with. Um, the documentation is currently for single cluster, which means um, you run an open cost instance inside your cluster and it stores data on that cluster. Uh, you can forward that data. Uh, we don't have a lot of documentation around that, but uh, there are definitely folks using your know, Mamir, Victoria Metrics, Cortex, Thanos, who are going to run federated clusters and push that data into uh, a single larger storage engine with multiple clusters and then run queries across that. Um, so the OpenCost UI is a Node React application um, running in a separate container from the cost model uh, that um, just runs API queries and renders them and pretty much try the goal really is to just if it's in the API eventually we'll have it in the UI um, there are a few shortcomings I'll talk about those uh, in a bit but the uh, the UI it's nice and uh, I can pull it up I've got a screenshot of it but I can pull it up if, if you want to see it later uh, it's fine. <laughs> uh, so that's our architecture. Uh, so deployment, you know, I mentioned uh, you, we, by default, we're using the Prometheus community helm chart. Uh, you know, we, you know, the, the default installation is you slap down the, the default Prometheus, and then we have an open cost manifest uh, that will let you install open cost with the right, um, permissions, uh, you know, cluster roles, um, and, you know, uh, the various settings that, that OpenCost needs to run, those are all in that manifest. We also have a much more extensive Helm chart uh, that has been uh, pretty active in, in the community as people, you know, they have different kinds of Prometheus setups they want to run, different endpoints for the data. Maybe they want to run OpenCost uh, without the UI and strictly use it as a, a metrics exporter. Um, you know, the, the lots of different configurations are supported in the Helm chart. And so that one's um, gotten a, a fair amount of, of uh, you know, pull requests uh, merged as, uh, as we continue to evolve the Helm chart. Um, but yeah, so that's, that's how you deploy it. Uh, and then uh, everything in OpenCost, uh, we try to be API driven. Uh, so we have a published Swagger file, um, as well as uh, you know API documentation with some examples uh, for for using it. Um, the next slide's the web UI, so I'll talk about that in a second. Uh, there's a command line plugin uh, called kubectl cost. Um, this is what the output looks like. Uh, lets you run various API queries from the command line um, with or without ornamentation. So if you really wanted a strip down, you know, export of uh, the data for, you know, processing, you could do it through the CLI, but most people are going to use the API. Um, and the API will let you export CSV, uh, which, you know, not, not, it's kind of a fundamental to all observability. <laughs> uh, we do have folks um, come in and ask questions about uh, accessing Prometheus directly. Obviously, uh, if we're working as a metrics exporter, uh, you can run queries against uh, the data we hold and push it into other in, uh, systems of record. Um, and then recently, uh, we had a Backstage plugin um, merged into the Backstage uh, project, so that should be included in the next release. Um, that was a port of the UI. Uh, we are not 
exposing any additional data over there yet. Um, it's really like, you know, let's get into Backstage and see what people want out of their open cost inside of Backstage. So that's a, another way to access it. And, uh, you know, like I said, we'll be in the next release. So hopefully that'll give us some more exposure and ways for people to consume. Um, this is a screenshot of the API. I'm happy to, of the of the UI, uh, happy to pull, pull one up. Um, it's a single page application. Um, we allow you to pick the date. Well, I think, let me just pull it up. Um, uh, sorry, my computer's name is mom. That's cool. My home PC is Soul S O L. Variation <laughs> on the theme, I think. Uh, I'm I'm nerdy. All my machines are named after Futurama characters. Uh, Mom is part of a cluster with Larry Walt Igner. Um, so anyhow, uh, th I've switched over to an EKS cluster. Um, uh, this is a just a long running two node cluster. Um, but you know you can change the the date window. Um, if you want to see, you know, 30 days of data, uh, by default, we're reason the default Prometheus. So it's only keeping 15 days that's configurable in the home chart, um, or, you know, in the, the Prometheus home chart, but, um, and as you see, uh, it says fixed UI was doing some, some patching. So, uh, I fixed the UI, um, we had a, a bug in the current release, but, um, you know, you can break it down and see your data by by your nodes, by controllers, um, you know, by the pod level. Um, you can do uh, this is you know broken down daily. Uh, you can view the entire window of everything collected over that amount of days. Uh, right up here in the in the uh, URL, you can see these are just the parameters to the API. So if it's in the API, I could come in here and say, well, you know, I want to see um, a 10 day report, you know, so we don't put 10 days in the UI, but you can go and put whatever you want there. Um, you can do, you know, timestamps or, or date times um, in here. Uh, you know, that's it. Um, well, community member provided uh, currency conversions. You know, we had it marked as a, uh, you know, good first issue. And so somebody showed up and, you know, now we can call them Australian dollars. Um, you know, the, the nice thing is the currencies are not kept. Uh, they're not country specific. It's really just a value. Uh, it's just a number in the database. So putting whatever currency you want on top of it doesn't really change anything. Um, and then, you know, you can do a CSV export uh, download of what you're currently looking at. Um, and so really the goal with the UI is anything in the API we want to, um, we want to expose. Uh, recently an issue was raised about the fact that the GPU data is in the API, it's not in the UI. Uh, you know, so somebody will fix that. It might be me, it might be somebody else. I marked that as a good first issue. Um, you know, folks coming with a React background are usually comfortable, you know, pulling something <laughs> straight from the API and adding another column. Um, I guess while I have this up here, I could talk about other uh, roadmap items for the UI. Uh, we currently have download CSV. People have requested, hey, can I have a download PDF? Um, you know, fair enough, uh, make that available. Uh, that's not in the API, so we would need to add, add that to the API, but obviously pretty straightforward. Um, and then there are lots of PDF libraries out there. Uh, I think that was also marked as a good first issue. Um, just, you know, uh, there most of the contributions we get are not UI related. So I assume if somebody knows React and they show up, they can handle the things that I mark as good first issues. Uh, within the U, uh, within the API, there's a measurement called idle, um, which when we look at, you know, the cost of things, we see this column that says efficiency that tells us that, 
uh, you know, we have, we have assigned you, you've requested, say you've requested, you know, four compute nodes for your cluster. Well, um, we add everything up right inside your cluster and we'll tell you, oh, you know, it's only 30, um, you know, 33% uh, efficient. Well, that's because there's another number that's the idle. That's the opposite. You know, you've, it's what you've over allocated. Um, the numbers add up if you add uh, idle in, but it is missing as a row. <laughs> so occasionally people are like, oh, you know, my value, you know, my cloud bill says $100. You guys say, you know, 65, where's the missing $35? Well, it's the idle. Um, so yeah, we need to add that as a row. Good question. Um, uh, did you want questions in line or? I yeah, would... sure. I mean, I, I'm, I'm happy to take them. You, you would prefer in line? Uh, okay. Yeah, uh, as long as I have it on screen, you know. Yeah, so, so, so great. Okay, then. Um, uh, then if others have questions, uh, uh, just jump in or we can always raise hands if we have a log down. But I, I did have a question on what you were talking about just now. Um, is this akin to Slack usage? So so over allocation. Um, so when 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 doing this, are you looking at like the rates uh, for say EC2, or are you looking at the rates as negotiated by some bulk compute? Purchase, so that's you know that's... you know or are instance specific kind of like costs like at what granularity are you computing efficiency and is it actual slack or is it but by slack meaning um actually underused capacity that yeah yeah uh so so you've actually got two questions in there i um, do yeah there the, but yeah i have other well no no, no I, I'm, I'm gonna answer yeah. both uh and then you know hopefully you'll have some follow-ups uh yes slack uh we call it idle some people call it waste um it's You've made a request for some amount and you don't use it all, but you still pay for it. Um, and so Slack is also another good term for it because uh, sometimes that's intentional, right? You can't run at 100% efficiency um, because you know, you'll know you start, uh, well, you'll start having you know out of memory or, or you know whatever, you're gonna have conflicts uh, and resource contention. Um, so yeah, you have to have some Slack in the system. Uh, you know, so yes, that's, that is what it is. Um, you know, you can take this data and use it, uh, for, um, for optimization. Uh, obviously, uh, there are, my count right now is there are five commercial products embedding open cost. Um, and several of them take the optimization route, uh, including KubeCost, where, you know, they're going to say, Hey, we've got this idle number. Uh, this efficiency value. If you want to bump it up, here are some changes you can make. Uh, there are auto scalers uh, that can take that uh, data. Uh, I submitted a talk uh, to to KubeCon that wasn't accepted. Um, that uh, to, to do it with Kata, um, mm -hmm. where you know we would take some uh, uh, you know uh, cost efficiency as as an input and and use that for auto scaling. Um, so um, yeah, great. Uh, this might be actually a segue, and I don't want to divert too far away from your deck, but uh, a question came in from Vijay on, on Slack, uh, rather, rather in chat, um, and it, it was sort of, it, it, you were getting to it here, and it's one of the ones that I had written down yep. uh, around, like, you, you know, how do we extend this, or is it extensible for, say, CRDs, either when folks write custom controllers to manage, you know, uh, 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 infrastructure, you know, in their own data centers, say, or custom yeah. platforms, or something like, like even cross-plane, or something where you have tons and tons of CRDs that are, that map to, to resources that are not running in the cluster but have costs. So, is there an extensibility model? I think, and I think BJ, tell me if I'm outside the spirit of your question, but I think they were roughly the same. BJ's actual no. question was: uh, Is it possible to compute costs for non-Kubernetes infrastructure resources? And then he gives examples: Prometheus, time series, per tenant, or, or so. So, I think we're asking different facets of the same underlying question around extensibility. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, yes. And not yet. <laughs> um, so so I, I'm, I, I'll come back to that. And and I've got a slide later where I talk about roadmap. Um, and I'll, I'll come back and talk about that. Uh, but I, I still want to clarify one point um, in, in your question. Um, you asked if we had... Uh, like negotiated discounts or, um, you know, if we had uh, reserved instances or um, sustained usage discounts or, you know, there's any number of things you can uh, get. I was trying uh, not to call it a particular cloud with the reserved instance monitor. Well, sure, kind of sure. Loved up by CVC2 anyway. So, yeah, uh, but, yeah. I mean, we, we, so I don't think I said it. Um, 
you know, the, 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 uh, when the project was launched, it supported AWS, GCP, and Azure, uh, as well as on-premises. Um, what we have added uh, support for Ali, uh, Ali Cloud, uh, Ali Yung, um, and we have some support for Scaleway, uh, which, you know, came in as, you know, those both came in as community patches. Um, there have been issues raised for Linode, um, and, uh, another, uh, yeah, another provider, uh, we haven't had patches for those yet. Um, but we do have a doc for, you know, adding new cloud providers. Um, that is it, said, is it, is it a plugin architecture at a high level or is it more a, a deeply integrated, the project has to kind of accept it in and then it's there for everyone or, or is it, sort uh, of a, yeah. Yeah. Um, it is, uh an API that you have to implement and it's within the cost model uh, code base. So adding a, a cloud provider is currently within the code base. Um, as of today though, we don't have billing integration um, or we don't have reconciliation, which is the real kicker. So cloud bills um, are, are, are complicated. And what we do today is we provide uh, we align your Kubernetes data with your on-demand pricing, your list pricing. So, you know, if I spin up, you know, if I if I pull out my credit card and, and sign up for for GCP and get uh, and say I want you know ten compute instances, I haven't talked to a salesperson. I don't have any sales discounts or anything. That's my on-demand pricing. Um, you know, you pay list price. Uh, spot instances, you know, are the price on those is going to move. Um, that's what is currently supported in open cost is you know, the spot instances with the variable pricing and the on-demand pricing. Uh, if you have, you know, negotiated discounts or even sustained usage discounts that are, you know, pro programmatically at applied, um, we don't calculate that yet. Uh, KubeCost has, uh, like two releases ago, open sourced their billing integration. Um, so, we didn't really make a big announcement about it yet because nobody's it, it's it's a developer feature at this point um but what that means is you have the capability of going to your account's bill and reading the data um reading the data is not good enough uh because i mean not good enough as an end user because um cloud bills are not instantaneous if you've if you've worked with um, the uh, what they call the cloud usage report on AWS, the CUR, um, or the equivalent on the other providers, usually there's up to maybe 48 hours of lag time between what your on-demand, what you actually were doing on their cloud and what shows up in your bill. Um, so, wow. so OpenCost doesn't take the time to go and read you know, 48 hours later, what happens in your bill and then go and reconcile it with the data that we recorded to see if they're the same or, you know, to, to fix it. Um, which means open cost, uh, and, and every other, you know, cloud cost tool, um, none of them are accurate unless they read that cur, and that reconciliation step, uh, is not currently done in open cost. It's a lot of work. Um, but a lot of sorry. yeah yeah but I, before we get too far I, and 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 could you please clarify when you said that uh it had just been open sourced is that in yeah. the context of what's being uh proposed for incubation with the cncf or is that uh separately adjacently potentially under a different license it's being open sourced oh no 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 that it was a patch set into open cost oh okay so, thank you for, thank you for yeah, clarifying. yeah 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 Sorry. They they showed up with like here's some stuff that we use in production. Oh, yeah, I, I only ask because we sometimes uh, within the scope gotcha, of the gotcha. to invite projects that are just out right. like in yes. the, in, out there in the it evening. was a patch set into open cost. Yeah, yeah. This is not you know something that you know those guys over there. You know you can use it if you want to. No, uh, this is inside of open cost, um, and it's going to come back in uh, the roadmap as we talk about that. Um, but. That anyway, it's a freaking question. Uh, does open cost read my bill? No, it doesn't today. 
Um, and, and that reconciliation step is a lot of engineering work and, um, you know, KubeCost may submit that as a patch set or, or Microsoft or Grafana or, you know, whoever, but it's a large patch set and it's, you know, maintenance work. Um, but what you get with OpenCost today is as a small user like myself, I don't have any discounts, so it's always fine. Um, if you are a large user like Grafana Labs who do have discounts, they don't actually care about the dollar values. They're looking for changes in velocity. Um, they're looking for, you know, is my bill starting to spike fast? Um, or they're actually, or just, you know, the ratios for namespaces, uh, if you're doing chargeback kind of, kind of work. Um, that's, you know, a frequent question is like, does it read my bill? And the answer is no. So, um, you know, it's not going to be perfectly accurate unless you don't have any discounts, which, you know, um, a lot of people don't have any discounts anyway. Uh, so that's the UI. Um, and uh, a nice tangent into uh, uh, you know how the cost model works and billing and stuff. Uh, let me switch back to my slide deck and continue. Um, oh well, I'll just leave it in this view. Uh, so a quick project history. Um, you know, as uh, as Matt mentioned, uh, we you know the. Uh, OpenCast project was presented to Tag Observability March 1st of last year. Uh, that was before it was announced as a CNCF sandbox project in June of 2022. Um, the first release as OpenCost was right after that uh, in, in June, June 14th. Um, the previous name of the project was the KubeCost cost model, uh, KubeCost being the company that uh, contributed the, the first batch of code to, uh, to the CNCF. Um, we have mostly cleaned all occurrences of KubeCost out of the code base, uh, but there are still a few places where, you know, variables or, um, you know, the, the name of a container still says KubeCost, but, um, they're not user facing. So, you know, an OpenCost user does not really know, you know, the history of the project unless they, you know, dig into it. Um. You know, at uh, FinOpsX and Open Source Summits, right after that, uh, Chris Chris Anisek, uh, gave a presentation about you know introducing the project. Um, th these projects were you know right next to each other, so it was a long week of, of presenting the project. Uh, in November, uh, the OpenCost website moved into GitHub, and um, <clears throat> everything was you know the licensing was all switched to uh, the appropriate Creative Commons license. Uh, and all trademarks have been assigned to the CNCF, obviously. Uh, December of last year was the first release of the community-driven uh, Helm chart. Um, you know, we, it, you know, it was getting a setup uh, was you know pretty straightforward. Uh, so that's a separate repo. Uh, and then December fourteenth of last year, uh, the one nine nine release was the first that included the UI by default. So the UI was in the code uh, repo but nobody was building it so there was you know effort to to clean it up and make sure it was properly deployed um this year um in february uh the 1 100 release uh grafana labs put out a blog post a you know we co-authored a, a blog post announcing their involvement in the project uh as well as you know that they are using it internally um, and, you know, obviously they're submitting a lot of patches around Prometheus, uh, performance and, uh, you know, helped with a lot of, uh, query optimizations. Um, in February, uh, 27th, we, the FinOps foundation announced that we were a certified solution. Uh, we were at the Southern California Linux expo. If you're uh, in North America, that's a, a fairly good, large open source, uh, uh, conference. Uh, we had a booth and I gave a presentation um, you know, to, about the project. Uh, in April, Microsoft made a blog post announcement and um, contributed uh, two features of note to the project. Uh, one was um, CSV uh, export as like a service. So, you know, you can have a directory or uh, an object, you know, an S3 bucket or, you know, the uh, Azure equivalent and every uh, day, You'll get a CSV drop of all your data, um, which, as they pointed out, you can easily import it into Excel because you know, it's Microsoft. Um, 
And uh, so they announced their involvement in the project, uh, which is, has, has been really helpful. Uh, we were at KubeCon EU in the project pavilion. Uh, we had a kiosk there the full time. Uh, a lot of people came through. Um, uh, you know, in May, uh, I submitted uh, OpenCost as a, uh, a project uh, for incubation, which is, you know, why we're here, uh, I guess. Um, and uh, the 1104 uh, release uh, is the first that had uh, focus support. So focus is a um, a project by the FinOps Foundation to provide standardized cloud billing as an interface. So you can compare what happens in Azure to what happens in GCP, for example. Um, you know because those you know all the different cloud providers will call things different names. And so what they're trying to do is normalize it so you could compare, you know, object storage in one cloud to object storage in another cloud for billing purposes. Uh, when OpenCost started supporting it, um, we renamed a lot of our internal variables and customer or user facing things to match their terminology. You know, obviously the different clouds call the same things, different things. Um, so we're, we're standardizing on focus terminology. Uh, and right now there is a, uh, a billing standardization project to actually take a bill from you know AWS and convert it to a focus based bill and you know Azure Oracle and GCP you know convert all of them to focus so you could compare them. Um, what we're planning on doing eventually is as that you know approaches a a, uh, a stableish release, we'll add focus as a, as a as an importer. So yeah, we'll we'll continue to support cloud providers, but also we'll support ingesting focus directly. And that way, if there were other cloud providers out there who natively exported focus, we could just get them for free. Um, so that's what we're trying to do with focus. Um, in June, uh, Grafana Cloud announced they're making open cost available to their customers uh, through their Kubernetes monitoring product. So that was uh, a nice announcement, um, you know, uh, validation that uh, people are using our product in, in production and being happy with it. Uh, you know, we had an announcement with Focus that we were supporting it. We got announced on stage when they, you know, announced their project. Uh, last month, um, we have a backstage plugin that got merged uh, into the uh, backstage code base. And uh, the next release is coming out this week, next week. Um, and so we'll uh, put out a blog post announcing that we're, uh, you know, the backstage plugin is available for use. You know, please check it out, kick the tires, let us know what you think. Um, and then uh, last week I uh, submitted our annual review and uh, for KubeCon uh, in November, uh, we are signed up for a full-time kiosk and we're gonna have a project working session. Uh, it's already on the calendar. And so we will, uh, discuss our roadmap. Uh, that's the plan for, for that. Uh, you know, community things. Uh, obviously, most of our conversations happen in Slack. Uh, we also have a, a community meeting. Um, currently, we have our own calendar, uh, but I'm going to move us onto the community calendar, the CNCF calendar. Um, <laughs> you know, people find it better. Uh, but we've had, you know, 30 meetings or so uh, the meetings are every two weeks, and so there's a, a Google Doc uh, at this Bitly link that has you know meeting history going back. Um, uh, a little bit uh, about the yeah. Uh, just to do it in line rather than the end. Um, I had a question around this. Uh, so it sounds like you're you you've now moved since your last March when we when we last uh, uh, heard from the project. You've moved to more frequently cadenced open meetings. So. So it sounds like those are those community meetings are actually project meetings where you're actually doing triage and you're talking about the project. They're not sort of messaging meetings to the community that are in inform. Is that is that it, accurate? It's so you're doing it, you're doing it, this in the open, so to speak, or is it like a? Oh yeah, it's totally in the open. Um, that's great. It, it, the meeting is we have a an agenda, and I mean, here's the uh Sorry. Uh, yeah, here's the meeting notes. Um, 
it, we, you know, we usually have an agenda where we talk about like, you know, the project, you know, major tent poles of what, of activity. And then whoever shows up, we're going to have a conversation about it's whatever. First question. Um, so. Yeah. But, uh, we, it, it sounds like you, my point is from, from, from the, over the last year and a half, I, I'm, I noticed you really pivoted to, you know, doing, doing all the stuff in the open uh, as was. So oh yeah, yeah, yeah. We. Yeah, half, the, so I, I guess I'm trying to call out like this is awesome to see that that you took the feedback from a, a year and a half ago and you've really made that demonstrably part of your process. So. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I we don't get great attendance, which yeah. I, 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 you know, is is why I want to move us onto the CNCF uh, calendar. Maybe you know more people will see it. Um, yeah, so that's something mean, that comes with incubation. So the CNCF has a pretty, um, for those not familiar, uh, sandbox projects kind of can't get too much support, if you will. It, 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 not that they can't, but but incubation and higher, you start getting more and more support from the CNCF's various um, project support uh, apparatus. So, well, and you know, as, as long as we're talking about you know incubation and uh, stuff, I, yeah. <laughs> uh, well, I, I so I've I've obviously I pay close attention to, um, you know, other projects that are going into incubation and, you know, their, I don't know, the health of their communities and, you know, stars and, and metrics and all that stuff. Um, we have a lot of people in our Slack more than, um, more than anything, except for, I think, uh, is it Strimzy? Is the Kafka? Uh, yeah, I mean, we, we, our Slack has more people, but I also saw like, you know, well, Backstage has a Discord. We don't have a Discord, for example. Um, so our, our Slack has 700 some people in it. Um, we don't have a lot of conversations. Uh, I mean, you know, they happen. Um, I definitely will have, people have, you know, dropped in on the community meetings and say like, you know, help me debug this. <laughs> and, you know, uh, you know, I, you know, we, we do. Um, a lot of stuff gets pivoted back into GitHub. Uh, you know, it's probably the nature of what we do. Most of our users are, you know, they want they want to use us to get some data, and they don't really get that involved in the project once you know they get the reports they want. <laughs> so, um, you know, one of my goals is you know when, as we move into incubation is like we need more developer contributors. Um, we have a lot of. We get a lot of issues. We get a lot of you know feedback, but we don't get a lot of contributions except from people who this is their day job, um, which I'm sure that's across all CNCF projects. Uh, luckily for us, um, you know there are four organizations, five organizations contributing that this is your day job. Um, so you know I'm trying to. Well, I, I've got a slide where I talk about uh, you know governance, but we are trying to push for more. Um, more contributors uh than just could cost but so uh, apart from contribution another function that the tag can serve is to connect projects with uh cncf end users uh, yeah. many of you're probably already talking to but um do you have any case studies that you've done uh, uh or, or or plan to do with any of those as part of the incubation stuff or do you see that as a, a post incubation activity to really do more case studies and, and document like um, this is how people are using it or, or blog posts, things like that. Um, yeah, I, I mean, uh, Grafana and, and Microsoft. CNCF and user community like companies. Yeah, uh, so Grafana is acting as an end user uh, and then later as an integrator. So, um, you know, when they first joined, they said, we're using it internally and we're running thousands of clusters and this is what we're doing with that data. So we have a blog post about that. It's not a case study, uh, I guess, um, in a, the strictest sense. Um, Microsoft is, you know, the Azure team is using us as part of their billing product. Uh, so it's not an end user uh, per se. We do have an adopters file. Uh, I haven't pushed a lot of people on that. I'm sorry. I fear I may have mis mis asked the wrong question. Um, I didn't. I didn't mean to put you on the spot and say, could you please list. Uh, uh, companies. I, I guess I'm asking an open question uh, so that folks watching this video will know. Like, would it be useful to the project at this point to have other CNCF uh, end user companies reach out to the project and say, "Hey, I'm also using it." You know, should oh we yeah, definitely, so, or, or definitely. Or is that, or is that not the right time in terms of your capacity on the project side to, uh, you know, 
to, to work with them to even to, to hear that influx of feedback, uh, you know, before Google. No, we, 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 we definitely, uh, we definitely, we get more feedback than we can work on. Um, but as far as uh, end I'm users, just none, right? So I was just trying to see. Oh, like, no, no, we, we get a lot. Project, right? Yeah, we, we get a lot. Um, we get a lot, a lot. And, uh, 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 you know, we, end users, um, you know, and I, I, you know, because of folks like Grafana uh, and, and others, I know that there are shops that are running, you know, thousands of instances. Um, what, I, you know, more end users for, uh, the incubation process would be great. I, I've, you know, Ricardo is our uh, TLC uh, sponsor. Um, I've, you know, I've got three organizations who are supposed to contact him. One of them is, I don't know, maybe they're on vacation. Um, so, you know, two of the interviews are lined up. Uh, those are, I guess, off the record. Um, but, uh, you know, we do have a, a, a lot of the activity is from integrators, you know, embedding our product into other commercial products. So, um, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, Ricardo, do you have a question? I see Ricardo has a hand up. Yeah. I, I actually have to leave in five, five minutes, but I, I had a couple of, uh, uh, questions. The, the first one was about you, you mentioned uh, in the architecture about checking the nodes. How, how does the integration work with things like uh, uh, the GKE uh, autopilot like deployments where nodes are not a thing and basically they build based on pods? Yeah, uh, we, so OpenCost does not support those. Um, yet and and most cloud billing products don't really have a or, or you know other kubernetes cloud billing products don't really support those well either um you know uh the aws you know we don't do fargate uh we don't do um ecs uh the elastic container service because they're not they're not really kubernetes um so right now, right now we don't support them. There, are, you know, people have raised issues that hey, you should support these, but uh, you need to be reading the bill, and well, uh, and, and we don't support them. Um, and I know that there are thorny yeah. problems from the support side. You know, from my you know the company I work for, KubeCast doesn't support them either. Uh, they also don't actually have that much penetration compared to just traditional Kubernetes, but right. yeah, we'd love to support them. Um, just yeah, I was, I was just thinking that probably the, the GK autopilot is slightly easier, but, but yeah, okay. It's interesting. I think it's, if someone well, wants to, to dig in, it's, it's probably a good one to, to have a look. Although, as you say, it, it's probably a very minor. Well, uh, but, but, you know, yep. our goal is not to be, you know, only the easy stuff. If, if, yeah. <laughs> If somebody shows Fair up, enough. yeah, we, we want to work with them. Um, exactly. Yeah. And uh, say it could be a nice project also to 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 raise like for for one of well, the programs I, I, that we have. It it definitely is. You know, it's definitely in the long term roadmap. Um, yeah. And uh, I'll you know, in the interest of time, I'll try to speed up a little bit. Um, yeah. So <laughs> just just another question, uh, just yeah. one more, because I I really have to jump out. Uh, okay. The in the relationship, because you mentioned the FinOps uh, uh, yes. just before, uh, yes. Yes. is there is there a, a relationship with other projects? Uh, because you mentioned the relationship with the cloud native and CNCF projects. Right. Uh, just for for completeness, is there any kind of relationship with other projects also outside the, the CNCF or in the FinOps Foundation or or similar? Um, well, obviously, we are consumers of Prometheus. Um, we don't really, I mean, Prometheus has graduated, you know, works for everybody. Uh, we haven't really sent them any feedback. Um, you know, the KubeCost uses uh, Thanos, um, you know, other people using Cortex, uh, you know, those are CNCF projects. I don't think that we really have that much day-to-day -day, uh, discussions with them. Um, you know, the, the backstage one is promising, uh, obviously, because, uh, you know, that's putting our UI and in, in their project and hopefully that will uh, help raise awareness of, of what we're doing. Um, we, 
you know, people have looked at um, uh, CADA, you know, the to do like automated uh, auto scaling sorts of stuff. Uh, that people have come and asked about doing that work. And I, you know, I point them like, here's, you know, here's how you get our data. Here's how you could integrate it. Um, some of those are just, you know, integrators like solving their own problems and not getting us involved at a higher level. Uh, there, I, in, in the roadmap one, I discuss um, carbon footprints, the Kepler project. I don't know if that's sandbox or like sandbox, you know, uh, there are a couple of power usage ones that are being discussed. Um, we'll probably take a different path to uh, carbon costs and power um, than than those. But um, yeah, so right now we're not super involved with other things other than consumers of those. Uh, yeah, it is what it is. Um, Bartek has a question in chat. I think he's online if you want to ask it directly. Or <laughs> yeah, totally. So... Um, kind of like question around technical details uh, for exporters, like how you kind of gather those metrics that you base the calculations out of, right? So I'm interested in uh, how the project handles like the changes in metric names or labels, because maybe, you know, those exporters evolve, they get extended, uh, open telemetry semantics goes in, like how, how you handle those just out of curiosity. And another question is like, do you have any gaps in metric instrumentation, things that you would like to capture, but there is none in open source? Um, the stuff we're collecting is pretty standard-ish. Um, you know, there there is an issue raised against the website that we need to have a better metrics documentation page that explains like what we're pulling out of uh, different uh, endpoints. Um, I know right now, uh, KubeCost has a documentation page where they're like, if you're using KSM v1, if you're using KSM v2, everything gets pulled and then renormalized into a uh, open cost namespace. So um, we were, we're uh, the Grafana, for example, has told us like, we're not very efficient in our usage of metrics. You know, we have too many, we, you know, we we're we're sloppy with our name with our our metrics is is essentially the feedback we've gotten um the reason being uh we're still trying to support lots of different potential um versions of kubernetes and ksm and stuff uh there <clears throat> and the issue that was raised you know hey how do i optimize this um again i point people at the kube cost documentation for now until somebody wants to go through and, and clean it all up for us, uh, the best reference is over in KubeCost. It, it's fortunately, unfortunately, is it's not usually that big an issue. Um, Azure and uh, Grafana have submitted patches to add additional metrics and we have, um, you know, there's now metrics about like architecture. Um, you know, is it, are these ARM instances? Are they, you know, so now I can run queries and say, you know, show me the efficiency of ARM versus um, you know, x86, for example. Uh, but yeah, I that is a documentation sore point. Thanks for bringing it up. <laughs> any, that's fine. Any any gaps in terms uh, of like no, maybe some metrics you exporters that you're missing? Um, if they're gaps, it's because we're doing things inefficiently, not that we know that they're gaps. You know, so somebody okay. else might come in and say like, you could do this this way. And so we have been getting like, performance patches from you know from you know commercial vendors using it who come in and say you know hey you know you should be you know let the database do this query you know don't don't make the you know don't mechanize this and so um yeah i mean so yes there the the gaps are performance generally and you know those get uh rolled up as fast as we can yeah um i don't think uh we generally tell people, you know, Prometheus is not your best long-term storage. And we know that there are scaling issues if, you know, if, if you put, you know, 10,000, if you put, you know, 500 nodes on a one Prometheus install, it doesn't scale well. So oh, most large instances show up and they start exporting to the likes of, um, you know, Mimir or Thanos or, you know, Cortex or Victoria Metrics. Yeah. Quick question, like a common deployment topology um 
uh, that, that I've seen and, and used myself is like for, for folks that are doing, uh, you know, namespace as a service, say, or, 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 or managing um, cardinality expansion in self-service ways by running a Prometheus instance per namespace apart from the cluster's own monitoring, et cetera. So for those sorts of scenarios where a cluster may have a whole bunch of Prometheuses, you know, does your does your metrics and data model assume that there's sort of one source of metrics per cluster? Yes, it does. Sort of it it, it assumes does. one per cluster because we're running, we're rolling things up to the cluster. So, you know, if, if you tried to run Prometheuses across, you know, namespaces, well, then we wouldn't be able to query, like, show me the node performance. Um, right, I guess the cost asking, per... like, have you, have you tested in those scenarios which are typically much more stringent with regards to RBAC, service accounts, um, cluster roles, cluster role bodies? Like, like it's a little more complex generally to, to do cluster-wide things in in, 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 a, in a prescriptive way. So I was just, maybe I'm getting at the roadmap items. I want to make sure we're at time. Um, I can stay longer and, there, and I'd rather stay longer to account for any questions and let you finish as much as you like, because then we'll have the recording. So um, I don't believe we have a, a, an intense time pressure, but I want to make sure that Henrik and others, Anton, uh, Bartek, you, you, you get a chance to ask, ask any other questions you want. Um, and we can do stuff later too. We can set up another meeting if we want to have a sure. follow-up. Um, I mean, to, to, yeah. Cut me off anytime, but uh, I'll, I'll just keep answering questions then. Um, well, I mean, yeah, in the interest, of, let, let's let's index for the other three folks that are here. Um, oh, there, sorry, I'm not sure what time zones are. Do you guys do you guys want to get any questions in now while while we're still within the hour? Um, no, I I was just uh, curious about because I I use open cost quite a quite often for demo and or to to show, to use, uh, showcase the solution. Uh, I use the collector with the Prometheus receiver to scrap the data that, uh, I mean, all the scrap configs that you have done, I have moved it to the collector to then uh, rely on the collector to let the end user do that. So I was wondering, are you planning in the future to either provide a collector configuration for well, the recommended uh, collector configuration, or uh, are you planning to, for example, have a, a metric uh, hotel metric exporter, I mean, uh, endpoint, which where uh, you can configure open cost to say, here is my hotel uh, exporter endpoint, and here uh, we'll get the metrics. Um, yeah, we've had a few people ask about hotel support, but um, nobody, nobody has really pushed for, uh, for it yet. Um, and so, uh, most people are happy to, you know, like you said, scrape, you know, scrape it themselves. Uh, we so we, we're not providing anything um, hotel specific yet, and it's not on the the short term roadmap because it just hasn't been coming up. Um, so, nobody's cool. against it. So, but, uh, so given that Open Telemetry is the fastest growing open source project in the CNCF behind yeah. Kubernetes, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it, it, I, I suspect that's more about awareness. Um, is the project uh, open to say a contribution Absolutely. that they do that? What, is Absolutely, that what, yeah. Okay, so There's, when you say it's not on the near term roadmap, you're more talking to committed work, not what's possible. I, the I can only possible. speak. Yeah, I can only speak to like the code, the patches that you know <laughs> that I'm working oh, with. Cool. You, yeah, um, I you know I haven't seen somebody. Uh, you know, like I said, when when Microsoft joined, they just showed up with features and patch sets and you know we were happy to take them they weren't on the roadmap you know they we don't our roadmap is very reactive and and so you know i could tell you things that'll probably happen in 2023 but i can't tell you much further than that um you know our so yes if 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 hotel patches showed up tomorrow we would be talking about hotel next week right it's uh you know so definitely That's happy to so we should schedule yeah. something to follow up, perhaps, and have a focus session. I bet Bartek, Henrik, and half of the other folks that um, are yeah, are, yeah, yeah. yeah. Really, um, and we could also Alalita, uh, who wasn't able to be here today, is actually uh, 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 part of the governance for the hotel collector itself. So you know, the tag is exactly specifically a place where a project can come for guidance, help, jumpstart, or put awareness out that patches are welcome. Um, yeah. Uh, patches are always welcome or, or maybe um, attendance to community meetings followed by patches is probably <laughs> yeah um, yeah so I, I i hopped over um the the project uh management stuff um 
So currently, uh, there are you know there are the the three repos. Um, the Helm chart is driven completely by non Kubecos people. Um, you know, Kubecos being the original contributor and still providing most of the engineering. Um, but the, you know, so the Helm chart is is completely community driven. Um, you know, there are two maintainers. Uh, I'm one of them, just to keep things running. But m most of the work happens uh, through uh, other, um, you know, community uh, c contributors. Open cost uh, currently has seven maintainers. They're all KubeCost employees. But um, in our governance document, we explain how you move from being a community member into becoming a contributor. It's you know, if, if you read the doc, it looks like everybody else's governance doc, um, where you know, uh, contrib committers invite other committers, maintainers are invited. We're trying to get more traction. And I've been, you know, pushing folks from Grafana Labs, from Vantage, from, you know, uh, Victoria Metrics, people who are, you know, using this in production. I'm trying to get them to, you know, take more assertive positions within the project. Um, it's a chicken and egg problem, really, is, you know, it's hard to have it's hard to put the community in charge if nobody steps up, <laughs> but sure. uh, we I'm, do I'm have committers. Um, if you're not already, uh, you might check out the tag contributor strategy meetings. It looks like, you know, you've already got a lot of the governance things in place, but there are some yeah. GitHub actions and some other templates that may or may not be useful, uh, as yeah. well as some some writing and some guidance on strategies on how to do just that. Um, yeah, and that's that's you're right, that is a nuanced discussion and, and to have. So yeah, yeah, it, it's definitely something that uh, you know we're pushing for. Is you know, um, I mean, Kubecast engineering is probably ninety percent of the code right now, but um, there's no intention to stay that way. You know, they want to. <laughs> well, I, I'm try. I, I keep trying to arm twist people from other companies to get more involved. Um, but yeah, definitely. Uh, and and the uh, Helm chart is is great because it, the, it's not even somebody who uses it for their day job. So um, uh, they are an end user. Um, but yeah, it's uh, we're trending in the right directions. It's just slow, slow going. But as far as the near term roadmap, uh, I talked about the open cost UI enhancements. Um, we submitted a talk to KubeCon that wasn't accepted about carbon footprint monitoring. Um, I'm having conversations with the Azure team. Um, they have uh, a alpha beta API for carbon costs. Um, and you know, we've met to, uh, the, the intention is to, to show your carbon footprint within open cost. So you would be able to say, you know, this namespace is taking uh, the most consuming the most power um so uh, related to that i have just one one small question so you know that tag uh, system ad is uh, doing some uh, yep. uh some recommendation on how to calculate that and kepler is uh, following on that direction so are you going to reuse the work that kepler has done so fork the kepler project to reuse what they have done or you're going to build your own components we will use whatever is made available to us um so i i you know i have um I lurk in the sustainability channels and I attended their meetings uh, at, at, in Europe. Um, they are, they're still trying to get good numbers, uh, like, you know, accurate ish numbers. We're far from, from being like, Hey, we want to like generate good numbers. I we're more on the line, the lines of these are the numbers that are being reported. And I, I need something that looks like a bill and, um, you know, the well, I'm also talking with the ThoughtWorks uh, has a has a project uh, called uh, Carbon uh, Cloud Carbon Footprint uh, CCF that is is pulling numbers from the various cloud providers and running it against uh, you know you um, you know specific models of hardware and you know trying to provide cost estimates like this data center is providing this level of, of footprint. The problem problem we have is we're, we're, you know, what we, what I need is for a provider to, to provide a number that says something along the lines of, you know, a, an M3 X large cost, you know, 47 carbon cents per hour. Mm -hmm. um, I, we're, we're not really, you know, staffed for like, you yeah. know, 
anyway, I mean, we, we are, we want to be a consumer of that data. I don't know if we're, you know, uh, if we need to be, if, if Kepler or, or somebody provides, you know, um, numbers like that, uh, we're happy to do it right now. We're just trying to get it next to the billing data, uh, which Azure seems to be the closest to doing that because they're putting those numbers in front of their customers. Um, sure. We're very, very flexible and the ThoughtWorks is, is similar. Um, so we're talking to them, showing them, you know, here's how we think we would do it. And they're, everyone's gone back to like, think about the problem, um, but it's all going to be done as open source. And, and there are also commercial products that have approached us about that, but we told them, you know, we're going to focus on, you know, open source, uh, you know, sources of the data, and then, you know, we'll make it pluggable later. Uh, but yeah, the Kepler ones just seemed too low level for us. Uh, that was my feedback to them. Um, and, you know, I said, give me a, a bill. <laughs> uh, so, you know, come, come uh, uh, Chicago, I'll, I'll go and, and follow up. And, and like I said, I, I lurk in the channels and I watch, but, you know, we're, we have enough other problems. Um, the, so the, the other question that came up earlier was what about like CRDs or yeah, other sources? About of to go, um, and that's actually a, a general instance of, um, a model transformation. Well, there's an extensibility thing, but before we lose the financial stuff, um, I, I kind of see it as two facets of the same architectural piece. Like if I'm an end user and I'm running at scale, I probably have my own finance team. They're, they have their own financial models in business vernacular for what costs look like. It may be attributed by organization inside the company or maybe by work stream or maybe by vertical or however a company decides to granulate, uh, to, to aggregate and, and understand cost and, and whatever granularity that they reason on. Um, there's a general need, I would think, to take costing data um, as well as, you, you know, and, and then aggregate it, you know, a transformation, if you will, from like one, one set of buckets to another. Um, that's a general problem, right? And then yeah. so similarly, you have like CRDs that might correspond to a Kubernetes resource definition that corresponds to a cross-plane object that's an S3 bucket. And in particular, I mentioned cross-plane because there they also have uh, a, 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 using kind of like uh, polymorphism, you know, almost like treating cloud providers uh, in a generic way so that object storage is object storage and MySQL is MySQL and Postgres is Postgres. And mm -hmm. it might have, a, you know, a, a provider for each of the individual clouds, but they are all fundamentally a MySQL instance running in a cloud that can have cost associated with it. I don't know that cost is part of the provider model, but, you know, I, how do you look at the extensibility of open cost and where you're drawing the dotted lines of like, this makes sense to have in scope for the project and this doesn't when we get to these more generic, you know, yeah. what's a workload, right? Uh, you know, is it these three namespaces or is one of those namespaces also containing other infrastructure that shows up in a bill, but shows up in Kubernetes as a particular CRD. So, so that, that extensibility layer is my biggest question. Yeah. I, our, our, so, so this, this, bullet here, external asset costs is our attempt at that. Um, I <laughs> yeah. So external asset costs are defined as things that are external to your Kubernetes cluster. Uh, but somebody somewhere wants to relate them back to it. Um, the idea, the, the common examples are um, monitoring, right? Uh, something that's monitoring my cluster. I want to split my monitoring bill up by namespace because, you know, Three teams need to split this bill three ways. Um, other examples are, you know, we're, we're in the wild, noisy neighbors happens too. Like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You're noisy. Um, you're making them busy because you're noisy. So we're gonna, yeah. yeah. Uh, I, I, other examples would be um, object storage. You know, there are workloads inside my cluster that are consuming object storage. I want to, you know, relate those and and show like this is how much a name. You know. Uh, a, a podcast, you know, and, and I want to concrete. Say I have a Kubernetes workload that's using object storage, say S3. Uh, maybe in there there are Parquet files because it's underlying a Databricks workload or something like that, or a, a Spark yep. workload. And versioning is turned on in the buckets, and the customer doesn't know it. There's a common cost over it. So, would you think that this would model those sorts of scenarios, like a breakdown in the bill to know here's cold storage that you're paying for that you might not be aware of with yeah. 90 versions. Yeah. Um, so, so, uh, so what 
uh, what KubeCost open, what, what KubeCost contributed into OpenCost um, is the ability to go and read your bill, uh, your cur. And once you have that data, uh, if you are tagging stuff inside of AWS, for example, you can actually get things out of, you know, Glacier or S3 that are tagged with, you know, the tags you're looking for, and those show up eventually in your reporting. Um, KubeCost has that feature set. Um, what they opens, what they contributed was, you know, go read the bill. Um, mm -hmm. So you can run those sorts of queries. Um, external asset costs are actually going farther than what KubeCost does. Uh, the intention is not just your cloud bill, but any provider. So let's say you will use Datadog. Um, you would actually be able to just say like, here's Datadog's billing source. I'm not reading the cloud bill. I'm, you know, maybe I have <laughs> a CSV uh, that is my billing data and, you know, just plug in some numbers and I want to split up Datadog, you know, per, per namespace. So um, external asset costs, the goal is to be able to support, you know, any sort of flexible, here's a new data source, here's a new billing source, map them in. So this is a broader um, definition than just to be to be clear than what yes. I was asking about. So yes, it, about it's definitely broader. To, external to the yeah. cloud vendor. I was meaning external to mean external to the cluster, but yep. still the same vendor. Like right, the right. So so we we wanted to go a step further because oh. um, you know Good. frequently you know yeah. people you know the people who go to KubeCast are like that's great. How do I put Datadog in here? <laughs> okay. yeah. and particularly at scale, you're going to have multiple vendors competing internally Absolutely. oftentimes because most companies are not monolithic internally, right? They're internal marketplaces and all of these solutions might be part of the catalog of things, right? Yeah. And, yeah. and that lets vendors kind of, so uh, uh, that that definite, that more broader definition of external, I would think is, is requisite. It's, really it's going to be, it's going to be the wild west. Um, the thing and... that comes to mind, and, and Henrik is more of an expert here than not Henrik's more of an expert. Uh, Henrik is more of a uh, Henrik Rex is more of an expert than I. There we go, tongue twister. Um, uh, around some of the open collector uh, transformations that are possible, but like when it comes to labels and things, there's there's a lot of freebies you get by moving to the hotel collector to do things like label manipulation, annotating things with other things based on rules. Um, you know, so there are some facilities that might provide at least some some constituent functional parts of a solution, um, as you've been describing, that wouldn't put the burden of implementation to the open cost project, but by collaborating right. and, and deeply integrating with open telemetry, which now, you know, is, um, I think, safe to say the path forward, at least for cloud native workloads, uh, you can yeah. leverage a lot of that and not have to build it yourself because some of that's really hard to build or use as sources that you might not have going through open cost right? right but you might need to so i'm kind of curious if you see that outside of the procedural code running inside open cost itself but that more configuration layer that leverages other things like perhaps open telemetry's collector architecture like do you see that as something that is within the scope of open cost, non-binding, or, or something that would be more like a, a community contributing integration. I guess I'm having trouble understanding like, where is it, is it really just needs based or is there some, I don't say moral line, but design line where, where, where you're saying like, these things are within the scope of what we consider the core project and these things are actually out. Like, is there any sort of guidance or um, about so, so. And I realize you, you don't the, speak necessarily for the totality of the project, but- like, I, know, I, I don't, is, but I can, you know, I, I, I can, uh, I, I can parrot things that have been said by our members, you know, in public, um, KubeCost, you know, who are still doing most of the engineering, they said that their goal is, uh, you know, to make this, um, able to consume any, any, you know, billing source and map it, uh, um, against, you know, Kubernetes. That's, that's what they want. Um, what we're doing with external asset costs is, uh, you know, we had a bunch of design discussions and then, uh, one of the community, um, uh, you know, contributors, uh, said, we're going to go implement this or implement a version of this. And then they worked with some of the KubeCost engineering, um, and put it in production and said, you know, we're going to go clean this up 
and contribute it back as a draft PR uh, that doesn't, you know, build new plugin APIs just yet, but we're going to bring object storage. So object storage was the first implementation to be done and not just S3, but, you know, uh, Azure blob storage and uh, GCP uh, object storage, whatever, you know, their, their name for it is to do all three of them, normalize it behind, you know, uh, a provider um, and then start running queries. Okay, so it sounds like you're not wiring in object storage directly as a new hard-coded kind of a thing, but this is the first instance of an implementation of a generic mechanism that's data-driven. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, well, I, I, I feel like they were... Well, no, no, no. I um, The goal was to have good separation. I don't think the initial implementation is going to have good separation. I, you know, I... I because it, first off, it's not bringing a new billing provider. It's like, I'm just going to use these, you know, the billing integration you already have, which is fine. Uh, I know? need to be clear too. Uh, I, I, I may, uh, I'm learning how to communicate better. There was no value judgment. No, 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 no. no. I, I'm just collecting data at this point. Yeah. Like, I mean, we're, we're absolutely. The TOC yeah. do the assessment. So, so th that's the nature of these questions. They are not implying. Yeah. Anything, or saying something okay. should be something or should not be something. I'm just. Again, trying to just collect data points that are that are factual. Um, well, yeah, and and, and like, I'm 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 definitely we're definitely excited when somebody wants to contribute a feature, and um, this contributor has, <clears throat> um, you know, has kind of dropped off. Uh, last, I, I they said they had it working in production. They said they were going to their legal to open source it, and and. Uh, and then the last message I heard from them was, um, we won't have this done by, we won't be able to provide this by KubeCon. And I don't know if it's because, you know, the commercial vendor they work for is blocking it uh, or not, but um, they also said they were going on PTO. So uh, I haven't heard from them. In, uh, I, I actually don't want to, <laughs> we we, I, I don't want to get anywhere closer to identifying anything or talking about specifics like that uh, in the context of yeah. this call, uh, or we start getting into weird places but uh thank you for that i'm happy to talk after or outside. yeah yeah but but the, the point is yeah but the, but the, the future, it, there has been movement in this direction my takeaway is the project could use contribution and or uh in, yeah input uh or or help uh and is there an existing branch or pr that is just stagnated <laughs> or is it like an idea that someone can come implement from no we had we had a lot of design conversations and they said that they would do it and they said draft PR coming soon. And then the draft PR hasn't shown up yet. Um, okay. And then the draft PR was meant to be the basis of like, you know, a halfway to a plugin architecture where. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I'm sorry, I don't want to, I just, I know at some point, like, I think it's at 20 minutes past, like, like Zoom will actually say like. Oh, uh, oh, sorry. And if um, we drop, that's why. <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, just to end it with. Um, we will have external asset costs at some point. Um, the intention is to have it pluggable where, you know, you as, you know, you can show up, you can bring Otel, you could bring whatever it is that you want to bring. You can show up with like, here's a CSV of my SREs and I want to build them to a namespace, whatever. We want to make it super generic. Um, and the assumption is once we have uh, an API with a reference example, this will unlock a lot of contributions because every other project that wants to have their data correlated into it, whether it's, you know, a monitoring platform or um, a big data platform, you know, all those SaaSes out there, this will be the path that we push them towards integration. Um, and all the commercial vendors who use open cost will push their partners the same path. That's, that's like the chess aspect there is is strategically we think this will get us a lot of contributors um for various plugins and then plugins will unlock more long-term uh committers and maintainers hopefully um so that's that's the plan there around right. external asset costs it's kind of ambitious um you know but our goal is to have something this year that we can start having conversations in public and pointing people towards um i mentioned you know other cloud providers uh, you know, we're happy to take patches and, and guide people. It's not that hard to implement. Um, but, uh, yeah, um, we'll, we'll get more of those documentation, you know, 
things like uh, the metrics, you know, we, we definitely know we have some weak spots. Um, you know, it's just uh, all, all those things. I would need, consider uh, them weak spots at this point. I mean, you're a sandbox project. I would consider them opportunities for. Them. Yes, they, they're opportunities. They're, they're good first issues. Uh, they get tagged in, in GitHub as, you know, we'd love it. Thank you. Week to me um, is bad design, but Henrik is about to say something, I think. Yeah, no, that was just a suggestion, but I think it's not part of the of, of this meeting. But yeah, I was thinking uh, uh, collecting more uh, because you're you're relying on on node exporters and uh, those that has already those labels technically. So yeah. having uh, asking to get the standard Kubernetes version, the standard uh, uh, application naming. So then instead of just splitting by namespace, you can also think of uh, providing the cost for a given version of a given application. Um, and then split it even more in, in granular approach. Yeah, uh, I think that will be useful for yeah for for project teams to to keep track on uh, if they're uh, being being better in terms of resource usage or not. Well, um, and, but, but, and we do multi. Uh, um, you can have multiple queries in your API requests, so you could do a tag, assuming that they were tagging on their versions. You could say, you know, show me the namespace with version one, show me the namespace with version two. You mentioned the API a lot. Uh, is it a REST or a GraphQL API under the covers? Is it's it REST. Open API yeah. spec or uh, uh, it has it has a, an open open API spec where there's a, a Swagger JSON. It's but when you it's say API, you're it. not you're not. This is not a CRD uh, Kubernetes API machinery no. supported. Uh, no, API. it's no. it's a bespoke REST endpoint yes. exposed via an ingress yeah. or a service, yeah. or exposed via service rather minimally. In, in yes, sense. that that is correct. But just uh, to add to to this, uh, I think the you mentioned a big good point about the the, the overall. Uh, you talk mainly about object storage, but I think it was already. Observability now with open telemetry is going to be uh, also very uh, expensive because if you can just a lot of metrics, traces, logs, whatever it is. So yeah. I think having keeping track who is is uh, is uh, the, whose project is generating the most telemetry data um, yeah. could be also a good way of keeping track on that. Um, again, I think uh, every of the vendors as moments well, is building in a different way, so that will be a challenge to get them to an uh, standard ways. But I think it's a quite a ch um, challenge, um, exciting um, ideas. I think I really like it. I will share it internally at least. So mm -hmm. yeah, uh, yeah. we'll and definitely uh, keep track on this. Another another thing that comes to mind if you end up going the operator route is you know say you walk up to a cluster where people are actually not running Prometheus, maybe they're running a cloud vendor agent. That just scrapes things and has no local storage, or maybe they're doing maybe they're doing Prometheus or, or whatever. But um, if you can only install like a singular Prometheus, then in some settings, like very large clusters and very large environments where you might actually want open cost the most, um, if you were to leverage, say, you know, existing ways to install and configure either Open Telemetry and or the Prometheus stack via their Helm charts and operators. Then you you know out of the box you could say have HA Paris without really having to struggle with the manual configuration which can be a little bit tedious you know without the help mm -hmm. of say the, the Prometheus operator or the Open Telemetry operator or something like that um, so you know I would I would encourage the project just based on not with any official hat on just Matt says like there's so many Legos that I think are complementary to your roadmap. And, and, and you can definitely accelerate adoption. Um, another thing uh, is when you get to much larger scales, like you already noticed the difference between cube state metrics version one and version two with cardinality alone, particularly the old one. But many places, uh, Apple uh, has um, actually op uh, open sourced something as well uh, out, of the, out of a Kubernetes thing um, that's a high, high frequency or high resolution uh, metrics uh, collector for larger clusters to feed auto scaling. For example, or other places might have written their own um, uh, metrics plugins or their own bespoke operators that do various stuff to handle some of the scale problems for large, large clusters. Um, so I think those are the kinds of environments for, where there's the most upside for using open cost. But um, I think if the tag could help, uh, you know, moving forward, ostensibly, if incubation is is past, I'm just trying to say, like, from a roadmap perspective, as an incubation project and the tag. You have a lot of ability to reach out both to larger end users to get some of those things and they will want to talk to you perhaps more or submit prs more if it's a incubated versus yeah because a lot yeah. of folks internally may have guidelines around what it's okay to contribute to and not so i would like to follow up offline with a few things 
that sure, are definitely stuff yeah. offline out of this. But um, thank you so much for staying extra half an hour. It must be like three in the morning for you. So um, it is. <laughs> I think any follow ons should be scheduled at a time zone that works for you. And I'll stay up late <laughs> if you like. I know. So uh, I mean, I'm so I'm Sydney based. So, uh, oh, I see. you know, if, you, if you're US based, it's usually just late afternoon for you. Well, that, that's all I've got, I think, uh, time for. I could talk more and have more yeah. questions, but perhaps a different day. Um, is there anything else from you, Henrik? I think you also for nope. nope, nothing. Thanks. Henrik has a diet and a wool open telemetry expert. So, you know. Yeah, I've uh, talked with Henrik before. So, oh, yeah. super. Great. I was going to say, yeah. you, should, you should be friends if you're not already. Great. Yep. Uh, thank you. I need to drop now. Uh, you guys are free to mm, test now too. if you like. But, thanks. Um, have a wonderful week. Thank you. Good too. Bye. Bye.